All right, here we go. Let's finish off the examples for 4.4 and finish off this ideal gas law uh, concept. So we went through, we realized that there are two very good starting points here for us. The ideal gas law, which is in formula uh, form, PV equals NRT, where R is that universal gas constant. R becomes a very good starting point for us as well because of all of those units. So when we start taking a look at some of the problems using the factor label method, I almost all the time like to start with the R value and just put my unit that I'm looking for in the correct spot. Let me show you what that looks like. So in this one, we'll just take out this idea instead of using a system of equations. All right, we're just gonna go straight factor label here. It says calculate the volume of 10 grams of O2 at 90 kilopascals and 18 degrees C. So you'll notice that our chemical amount here is measured in grams, not moles, which means we're going to have a further uh, conversion. Now, because the ideal gas constant offers us so many units, it's almost a perfect starting point and makes this actually uh, pretty straightforward and direct. All right, 8.314 kilopascal liters over a mole Kelvin. What we just want to ask ourselves is, if I'm looking for the volume, how should I put this set of units in to start? All right, volume is measured in liters, so should I write my 8.314 kilopascal liters per mole Kelvin as is, or should I flip it in order to do this? We've done this many times before. You can see that liters is in the numerator, so I should probably leave it there because that's ultimately what I'm solving for. So my solution in this case is going to be to just write 8.314 kilopascal liters all over mole times Kelvin. All right, that's what it looks like in a total fractional form. Now all we have to do is ca uh, cancel out kilopascals, moles, and Kelvin, and isolate liters. Remember, that's the whole idea behind factor label method, is to just cancel out and convert units until you get to the one that you want. So I'll do this one step at a time. As you get better with it, you'll be able to combine more steps, but for example, let's just get rid of our pressure. Kilopascals is in the numerator in my constant. I have 90 kilopascals of pressure in this particular problem. So if I want to get rid of kilopascals, it should just go on the bottom. And so 90.0 kilopascals would go on the bottom. There's nothing in the numerator, so that's just a one. And my kilopascals would cancel out. Now I just have liters per mole Kelvin. I'm getting closer. Well, let's get rid of the Kelvin because we know the temperature. All right, so 18 degrees. Now I can't use 18 degrees Celsius in this problem because I am dealing with Kelvin. So 18 plus 273 is going to be 291. And Kelvin being in the denominator here, I'd have to put Kelvin in the numerator here to cancel out. And lo and behold, we're now down to liters per mole but we don't have moles. Ah, okay, well, a couple of different approaches that we could take here. You could, if you wished, um, convert grams to moles separately, but we can do that right here by using molar mass. All right, I want moles of oxygen up top. I want grams of oxygen on the bottom. If I measure out one mole of oxygen gas, that would be 32.00 grams and moles have gone, but now I'm in liters per gram. That's okay though, I can cancel grams because I know I have 10 grams of it. So one more step. Mm -hmm. All right, 10 grams over one. And so grams now go, and I'm left with just liters. All right, it's about the same amount of writing, maybe even a little bit less than showing me all the algebra and all the stuff that you have to do for using the formula. This is much more preferred. This will work with that stoichiometry idea that we introduced and showed some glimpses of in previous parts of this chapter. This is a much better way of solving the problems in chemistry. Okay, it didn't work for Boyle's and Charles Law because of all those ratios. This would have just been a much longer solution to try and uh, deal with our uh, ratios. But in something which is purely calculative, like our ideal gas law here, this works out pretty darn nice. All right, so when we run this through, remember all numerators are going to be multipliers, all denominators will divide. So in your calculator, this would be something like 8.314 
divided by 90 times 291 divided by 32 times 10. And if you do that correctly, you get 8.4001 One dot, 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 liters. We have to go back. Remember, it was four for the constant, three sig digs, three sig digs, three sig digs. So 8.40, that will round down. And so we correct our calculator to be 8.40 liters of oxygen gas. Okay, so not too bad. Let's do one more. We've got calculate using unit analysis, which is what we're going to do, the volume of 45 grams of chlorine gas at 112 kilopascals and 40 degrees C. Again, we're looking for volume. Factor label in ideal gas law generally starts with the constant because it has all of the units that you could possibly want. Okay, and so this one will look very similar, 8.314 kilopascal liters per mole Kelvin. And now I just want to cancel out things. This one I can shortcut it a little bit. All right, if I want to get rid of Kelvin, all right, 273 plus 40 is going to be 313 Kelvin. That will have to go in the numerator to cancel out K. I can also put my pressure of 125 or 112 kilopascals into the bottom. All right, you can see what I've done is I've just kind of combined these two steps, eliminating the ones and eliminating some of my writing. If you like it expanded, go nuts. If you see what I'm doing here, this can just save you a little bit of extra writing and shorten the process a bit. All right, so you've got that kilopascals and Kelvin are gone. We now just have to get rid of moles. Unfortunately, I didn't give that. So remember, moles to grams is molar mass. And so for this one, we have the molar mass of chlorine, where moles will have to go in the numerator, grams down here to cancel out my moles. And every one mole for chlorine should be 70.90 grams because chlorine gas is Cl2. We remember that. And now finally, I just have to cancel out my grams. 45.0 grams of it. And the only unit left standing is now my liters, just like last time. And so plunk that into your calculator the right way, and you should get 14.7469 liters. Again, you had a three, 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 four digit set of um, measurements to put into there. Three is the lowest, four rounds down. So we correct our calculator to 14.7 liters of chlorine gas. Last example. All right, for this one, it says calculate the molar mass of a diatomic gas that has a mass of 1.25 grams, a volume of one liter, exerts a pressure of 100 kilopascals at zero degrees, and identify the gas from your molar mass answer. Okay, so we're trying to do molar mass. Well, remember the units of molar mass are in grams per mole. Okay, so we just need to make those units. We can still start off with our ideal gas constant or universal gas constant because it does offer us a lot of units. All right, 8.314 kilopascal liters per mole Kelvin. Notice that moles is in the denominator. That's what we want in our answer. So again, in this example, I get to use it as is, 8.314 kilopascal liters per mole times Kelvin. And I've got my little mole down here. I also need to get grams in the numerator. And I have grams given to me right here. So why not just add another fraction here and put in 1.25 grams. All right, I'll just put that in explicitly. And then there's my gram. So I want this over this when I'm done. Well, that means I need to cancel out kilopascals, liters, and Kelvin. Okay, well, I can do that from the remaining information I have in the question. All right, Kelvin is in the denominator, so I need that in the numerator. We're at zero degrees, so that's 273 Kelvin. It now goes. All right, kilopascals or liters, doesn't matter which one you pick. I'll go liters. Here's 1.00 liters. Liters now go, and now I just have to get rid of my kilopascals. Since it's in the numerator, it must go into the denominator to cancel, and we had 100 of those kilopascal pressure units. 
cancel out, you now have grams per mole. So we run that through our calculator. Remember, numerators are multipliers, your denominators are divisors, and so putting that in in the right sequence, you should get 28.371 grams per mole. We correct this one to our three sig dig limit that we had, and so there's your three, this goes up, and you get 28.4 grams per mole. Therefore, which gas do you think this is? We're told that it's diatomic. All right, so which diatomic gas would have a molar mass close to 28.4 grams per mole? Hydrogen is 2.02. .02. Um, nitrogen, when you look at that one, 14 per atom gives us 28. Oxygen, 16 per atom gives us 32. So... This one at 28.4 should likely be nitrogen. Not so bad, huh? All right, so last little bit. All right, the video that you see here, all right, is really just a crash course. Again, you can play it in the video, or pardon me, in the notes, or you can take a look at the video section on D2L. You should take a look at practice questions on page 174 and 176. There is a dry lab for B that you should do, and um, I will provide some data to do a lab 4.3, and you'll see that one appear in the Dropbox. You're just going to need uh, to take a picture of that one and submit that to me at some time, let's say before the end of the week. Okay, and so that'll be your chapter 4 assignment, and there's your practice material. All right, there is one more section here. As we take a look at it, I'll just quickly grab that from the binder here. All right, following these notes, you will see a section called Unit Review Examples. I'm going to leave these to you. I want you guys to go through, try as many as you would like uh, to try and prepare for your upcoming Chapter 4 quiz. All right, there's room for solutions all the way through this. All right, you'll find that there's a total of 11 practice questions that you can do. And then, of course, your exam prep that will appear in the unit review on page 181 of the textbook. Tons and tons and tons of questions there. Answers for these are both found in the D2L gas laws section. All right, full solutions for these 11 questions, plus in your answer key, you can find some of that. So there you go. There's chapter four gas laws. And good luck with it. Do a little bit of practice and uh, good luck with your chapter four quiz.